Hi guys, glad that you're working on getting ready for our test tomorrow. Um, as you can see up here, I've already filled in the vocabulary. Um, please remember to continue to study all of the vocabulary on our number one notes page that has a vocabulary list. Um, also, there's not going to be a word bank on this test. Um, just to reiterate that, we've set it up since Monday in class, so make sure you're also um, checking out the Quizlet that we've created for you to study those vocabulary words. Um, please remember that this is a video, so at any point, if um, you need to slow down, you can always pause the video. If you need to hear something a second time, please feel free to rewind. Or if you already have something that you checked and you got it correct and you understand the concept, please feel free to fast forward. All right, so we're going to start with number eight. Um, it's asking us which item is closest to negative four on the number line below, negative one-fourth. All right, so it's really important here that we remember that negative one-fourth um, what I like to do is think about what whole numbers is that going to be in between. So since it's not quite to 1, we should know that negative 1 fourth is going to be between a 0 and negative 1 because a positive 1 fourth would be between 0 and positive 1. So when I look here, there's my 0 to negative 1. There's only one dot in between. And it is closer to 0, which does make sense and apply to this number since 1 fourth is, would be the same as 0.25. So if you also need to compare that, you can also, remember, always refer to your decimal equivalents. Um, so that's going to be 0.25, which is, as well, closer to that zero. So my answer choice here is going to be C. Next one, which point is located closest to 0.5 on the number line below? This one is actually really easy just because of the way the points are laid out. 0.5 is a positive number. If I look to the right of zero, there's only one point located there, which is C. All right, and also, if I notice, 0.5, which should be between 0 and 1, which that is where it's located. All right, moving down to number 10. It says to circle all the comparisons that are true. So we're going to start with A. It says the absolute value of 5 is less than negative 4. Um, just to kind of review over absolute value real quick. Remember, the absolute value measures the distance from zero. It also makes any number positive. So the absolute value of a positive five is still just a positive five. So really, we're just comparing four, five to one-fourth. Five is clearly not less than one-fourth, so we're not going to circle that one. Um, here we see absolute value again. This says three is equal to the absolute value of negative three. If this was just negative 3, that would not be true. But remember, it does say absolute value here. The distance of negative 3 from 0 is 3 spaces. So really, this statement says 3 equals 3, which is true. So we're going to circle that. All right. Um, looking at B. Sorry, I realized that I did it in a weird order. Um, we have 12 is less than negative 4. Um, again, we have the absolute value there, so negative 4 is 4 spaces from 0, so really that's just talking about the number 4, and 12 is not less than uh, positive 4, so we're going to leave that one as it is. <coughs> D is our last one. It says negative 2 is greater than, because Pac-Man is eating the negative 2, negative 2 is greater than negative 17. Um, remember, when we look at the negatives, we talked about, um, we watched that video in class, and we said negatives are like down votes. So would Pac-Man rather have two down votes or 17 down votes? Two is definitely the better option. It gets us closer to those positive negative, to the positive numbers. So this one is true as well. Negative two is greater than a negative 17. Okay. Number 11, graph the following points on the number line. Please remember that when we're putting points on the number line, you do need to put the dot on the line. Um, when I'm looking at this number line, I see that it left off all of the numbers. <coughs> if you find it helpful to have those numbers in there, we can always number it so it's going to 5. And if I double check, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I can put those integers in if I think that that would be helpful. I'm going to do the same thing over here, going in the negative direction. And that ended at negative 5, which is accurate. So here I have 2. So I'm going to look for my positive 2 on the number line. And I'm going to put a dot on the line. Please make sure that you're putting the dots on the line, not just putting a number 2 underneath there, because then you haven't actually put anything on the number line. You just labeled a 2. 
Okay, that's like having a 0, a 5, and a negative 5 here. That's not part of my answer. All right, then we have negative 3.5. Now, if I think of a positive 3.5, I know that that's going to be over 3, so it'll be between 3 and 4. Same thing with the negative. We're going to be between a negative 3 and a negative 4. 0.5 means a half, so it should be directly in the middle. Our next point is going to be 1 half. 1 half should be not, we haven't made it to 1 yet, and it's positive, so it's going to be between 0 and positive 1. Halfway is definitely in the middle of those two, so 0 and positive 1. I'm going to put a dot. And then my last one is negative 5. It's a whole number, so this should be very easy for us to graph going over to negative 5 and putting our point. Okay. If you have any other questions about this, please feel free to come see me in the morning. I'll be in my classroom at 7 o'clock ready to answer questions. Evaluate and solve the following. So here we are looking at absolute value again. So I have the absolute value of negative 2. Remember, negative 2 is two places away from 0, so that is going to become positive 2. And then that still says plus 10. All right, please remember that while that is in those absolute value bars, you cannot add it. You have to do that computation. Absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. And now it just says 2 plus 10, which I can add and get 12. 15 minus the absolute value of negative 8. Again, that's in bars. I can't do the subtraction until I take it out. When I do the absolute value of negative 8, it becomes positive because absolute value is always, always, always positive. Absolute value is always positive. It measures the distance from 0. So 15 minus 8 gives me 7. Sorry. 15 minus 8 gives me 7. All right, right here, negative 3 plus 7. Again, we have absolute value bars there. I cannot add those while they're in bars. So I'm going to take my negative 3. The absolute value of a negative 3 has to make it a positive because that's three places from 0, plus the absolute value of a positive 7. No matter what, it's a positive number because 7 is 7 places from 0. So the absolute value of positive 7 is 7 still. And then 3 plus 7, when I add it, we get 10. This one's laid out a little bit differently. Remember, it's important that we show this work because together these are already in those bars. This doesn't seem like a big deal in the sixth grade, but as you continue seventh and eighth grade, this step is going to be crucial to finding the right answer. So when we do 150 minus 25, since they're in the bars together, I get 125. And you'll notice I kept the absolute value bars there because I haven't taken the absolute value of anything yet. So now is my final step. I would say the absolute value of 125 is still positive 125. But again, you have to show that step, guys. It doesn't seem like a big deal in the sixth grade. Seventh and eighth grade is going to be a big deal to helping you get the right answer. All right? So we're going to flip it over and look on the back. Starting up at the top, we have 16 and 17. It says order the following numbers from least to greatest. So when we're starting with the least, that means we're going to be starting with our negative numbers. So I'm just going to underline those so I'm not having to look at all five at once. I can just focus on those negatives. All right, please remember that when we're talking about the least, out of these negative numbers, the least means the furthest to the left. So if I looked at a number line, negative five would be furthest to the left. Also remember, if we're talking about the least, are you going to have less money if you owe someone $5 or if you owe someone $4? Owing someone $5 means you have less money because you're further away from actually having your own money because you still owe someone. So we're going to have negative 5 first. Then we have negative 4. So that takes care of my two negatives. So now I can focus on the positives. Again, going from least to greatest, my smallest positive number would be 3 because I'm going to have less money if I have $3 compared to, say, $12. So 3 is going to be my next smallest number. I'm going to have less money if I have $10 versus $12. So then we'll have 10. And then my last number left is 12. Okay, just making sure if I put a zero in the middle of those, would those count the right and going in the right direction? 5, 4 does get closer to zero. 12, 10, 3 does get closer to the zero, which is located in the middle of the positives. Please remember the zero is not a part of my answer. It's just there to help me make sure that answer is lined up correctly. Just another way to check our work. All right, on number 17, let's look at my positive numbers. So again, 
negative numbers, I apologize. So we're working on the negative numbers first because they're the smallest. In my negative numbers, it's going to be worse to owe someone $8. So negative 8 is going to be less money that I actually have than negative 5. So we'll have negative 8, negative 5. Then we get to 0. Again, we can double check. 8 and then 5, is that getting closer to 0? That lines up and works. And then the last number left is a positive 9, which is going to be the greatest number because it's positive. Okay, number 18. When I'm comparing a negative 3 and a positive 3, the 3's are the same, but because this one is negative, my positive is going to be a greater number. Also, remember, Pac-Man loves positivity. Positivity, so that's the way that my um, symbol should be facing. So it says negative 3 is less than 3. All right, number 19, negative 13 and negative 1. Again, here when we had those negative numbers when we were comparing, we said you could even think of those like YouTube. So would Pac-Man rather have 13 down votes or dislikes or just one down vote? Pac-Man's going to choose the one down vote because that means we're closer to that positivity. That's going to be the um, technically the greater amount. Okay. Um, so now we have a positive 10 and a negative 3. Again, Pac-Man loves positivity. A positive number is always going to be bigger. So 10 is greater than negative 3. All right, now number 21. Please don't let that decimal and fraction throw you off. We're going to focus on the whole number first. When I look at those whole numbers, when I'm comparing 4 and 5, 5 is the larger number. So that's the way my Pac-Man should be um, facing. And then if I read that out, that would be 4.5 is less than, because that's the small side, 5.5. All right, last one where we're comparing. Um, we have the absolute value of negative 1 fourth compared to negative 1 fourth. Now, right now, they look the same, but they're not the same since this one has the absolute value bar. So we've got to determine what that means. Please recall from the other side, the absolute value Always is going to be positive because it measures that distance from zero. So negative one-fourth is one-fourth of a space from zero. So now we can see, oh, well, a positive, again, is still going to be greater than my negative. So we get the greater than symbol. All right. The next four problems, it just says to write an integer. Please remember when it says write an integer, that means write a number. Please remember the dollar sign is not part of a number, so we don't want to write that in there. So when we read this, it says Sammy lost $2 at the zoo. The term loss would indicate that it's going away, that it's being subtracted, so that's going to be a negative 2. So if we lose $2, we have a negative 2. I did not put the dollar symbol because that is not a part of an integer. An integer is only the number. All right, the next one says the weather is 7 below 0. Again, the indication, the word below indicates that it's going down. So that's going to be a negative 7. I won $10,500 from Publishers Clearinghouse. If we're winning something, that means we're getting it, so that should be a positive number. Now, when we did negatives, we put minus signs. But remember, positive numbers are just the regular counting numbers that you first started learning when you started math. So we're just going to put 10,500. And anyone reading this number would automatically know that it's positive because there's not a negative sign in front. So that's a positive 10,500. We did not put the plus sign. We did not put the dollar sign because those are unnecessary symbols. All right, Ms. Kearley gave 10 learning earning points today. So since she gave those points, we're getting those extra points, so that's going to be positive. So we're going to do a positive 10. Again, not putting a plus sign, just putting that positive number there. All right, so number 27 is our last one. So this is what we've done most recently. All right, so we want to make sure we take some time to talk about this. All right, um, some people today, as um, they've been working on it, there's been a couple of questions about how, what this is actually asking me to do. Um, it says to mark and label the points, find the distance between the following coordinates. So here where it says A, that's part A, and you read it across just like we read that sentence. So we're going to do point A, point B, and then we're going to find the distance between those. And I've actually already included the word units for you. All right, so point A is at negative 2, so remember you've got to crawl before you can walk. So we go to negative 2 on the x, 
Then we go to negative 4 on the up and down on the y. So negative 2, negative 4. And we're going to put our point. And we're going to go ahead and label that with an A. Okay. And now let's do B, which says negative 2. So negative 2. And then this one goes up to 5. So up 5. Put our point. And we'll label that B. All right. What we're wanting to know is how far is it from A to B. Now, we've been working on a technique that works for any type of number. So whether you get into really large graphs or your, number, your graph is numbered by twos or fives, we can look at our ordered pairs. So we're going to try that first, and then we'll double check by counting. All right, so looking up at the ordered pairs, if I look at those two x's, those are the exact same x. So I can't find the distance between the x if the numbers are already there. Because a negative 2 and a negative 2 are in the exact same place on the x. So we want to mark those out because that's not going to help me to find the distance. All right, the next step that we're going to do, we're actually going to take the absolute values of the numbers that are left. So we have the absolute value of 4, which is 4. And then we have the absolute value of 5, which is 5. Okay? So now we got to decide, well, what is it we're doing with these numbers? Since this line crossed an axis, since it crossed the x, if you look here, you can even see together that forms a plus sign. So we are going to add our 4 plus our 5, which gives me 9 units. All right, I'm going to double check my work just by, I'm going to start at B, or I, I can start at A, doesn't matter. I'm going to start at A, I'm going to count to B, and we should get the number 9. So starting at A, let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That did work, so all of my work lines up and it shows that we did that correctly. All right, so let's look at B. Let's graph C, which is at 7. So I'm going to go over to 7 on the X. Remember, crawl before you walk. So there's 7, and then we're going down to negative 3. All right, so there's C. And then for D, we're going to go to positive 4 on the X. And then we're going to go down 3 here as well. So there's my D. All right, so let's connect those because now we're wanting to find the distance there, which we can pr see pretty easily what our answer is going to be. But again, let's just show that that technique for finding distance will work. Um, so if I look at this one, this time those y values are the same. Negative 3 and negative 3 are in the same location on y, so that does not help me find distance. All right, absolute value does measure distance, so we're going to be absolute value of 7, which is 7. The absolute value of 4 is 4. So these are the two numbers we should be using. Now, on A, we added them because it crossed an axis. If I look at this line, it's actually in the same fourth quadrant down here. It's in that same box. All right, so since it's in the same quadrant, what we're actually going to do with those numbers is subtract. And remember, we have the trick of same starts with S. Subtract starts with S. So we're going to do 7 minus 4, which gives me 3. And again, just to double check my work, 1, 2, 3. We did get the right answer. So I hope this helps us as we get prepared for our test tomorrow. Um, please remember I'm going to be sending out links to a bunch of quizlets to help you study, a vocabulary quizlet. I'll also send another quizlet that has additional practice problems for you. All right, hope you all have a great night and good luck on our test tomorrow.